Lesson 6.4D, Going Further, Arithmetic and Algebraic Solutions. We can solve mathematical problems by using arithmetic or by using algebra. Arithmetic is a branch of mathematics that deals with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers. Algebra is a branch of mathematics which deals with the relations and properties of quantities. Unknown quantities are represented by variables. Arithmetic and algebra are similar since we can use the same operations to solve an equation. We can add, subtract, multiply, or divide. But arithmetic and algebra are different because the algebraic method shows the relationship of the unknown to the other values as we solve. If we have 4n is equal to 20, we see how n is related to 4 or how n is related to 20. So let's try comparing solution methods. Let's do arithmetic versus algebra. The problem says Dave has a coupon for $2 off the price of each pizza he purchases. He uses the coupon and pays $36 for three pizzas. Find the original price of a pizza by using two different methods. So we'll use arithmetic, then we'll use algebra. That will be our two methods. The first method, using arithmetic, we're going to work backwards to find the original price of a pizza. We start with the whole amount, the $36 that he pays. And we divide it by the three pizzas he bought. That's going to tell us that they each cost $12. Now we need to add the coupon back on. We find that the original price is $14. The original price of one pizza without a coupon is $14. Using algebra, we write an equation in which P is the original price. So he bought three pizzas, and it was an original price minus the $2 coupon, and that was equal to $36 he paid. We can immediately divide both sides of this equation by three. We ignore the parentheses. We divide the three by three and the $36 by three. That's going to give us a one here. So identity property, if this is 1 times P minus $2, then we just have P minus $2. And it's equal to $12. Now we use the inverse operation of adding $2 to each side so that we can create a zero pair here. Minus $2 plus $2 makes a zero. And $12 plus $2 makes $14. We know each pizza was $14. Now. When it was in this form, we could have distributed the 3 to the P. This is 3 times P and minus, because we have a minus here, 3 times a negative $2. That's going to be a negative $6 or a minus $6. And that's equal to $36. Now we have 3P minus $6 is equal to $36. Then we would divide each term by 3. So we would have 1p, same numerator and denominator, minus $6 divided by 3 is 2, and $36 divided by 3 is $12. So do you see how when we were here, by just dividing this 3 and the $36, it actually brought us to this place, we ended up not having to do this because we immediately divided here. When we distribute, now we're going to have to divide each term by the 3, by this coefficient 3. So now we're at P minus $2 is equal to $12. We can do the same thing we did here and eliminate this minus $2 by adding $2 to each side. And it goes away, and now we have P is equal to $14. So we're getting the same answer whether we distribute this 3 into the parentheses or not, this way is quicker. Now, some students, some of you, may find that using the distributing method to make more sense by showing each step. Some of you may be able to just divide this 3 and that 36 by this 3 and do it quicker. Just remember, if you do it this way, we do not divide within the parentheses. We're just going to divide this number here outside the parentheses and 
this number after the equal sign. If we do it the distributing way, then we are going to have to divide by each term of the equation. So let's dig a little deeper. When we did it the arithmetic way, we did $36 divided by 3 is equal to $12. Then we had $12 and we added back on that $2 coupon and got $14. When we did it the algebra way, let's look at the distributing way. We distributed this 3 to the P and the minus $2. Then we divided each term by 3. Then we added $2 to each side. Well, when we were here, we divided by 3. We have 36 divided by 3, and here we're dividing by 3. When we added the $2 for here, we also added $2 for here. Same operations. The sequence of operations we performed using both methods was the same. The difference was that for algebra, we performed those operations to each side of the equation to each side of the equal sign or to each term. Let's try another one. Emma paid $42 for four yards of fabric after using a coupon for $5. What was the original price per yard? So the arithmetic way, we're going to work backwards. We're going to start with what she paid, $42. We're going to divide it by the number of yards of fabric she purchased, and we're going to get $10.50. Now we add this $5 coupon back on and we get $15.50. So the original price per yard was $15.50. Using algebra, we're going to use a variable. So P is going to be the original price of the yards of fabric. We have 4 times P and 4 times negative $5 is equal to $42. That means we have 4P minus $20 is equal to $42. We divide each term by this 4 coefficient, and we get 1P minus $5 is equal to $10.50. Now, we add the $5 back on to each side. We create a zero pair here, and we add $5 on this side, we get P is equal to $15.50. We know that was the price per yard for the original yard of fabric. So whether we solve by distributing first or by just dividing each side, we'll get the same value for P. The only difference is if we go straight into dividing this 4 outside of the parentheses and this 42, we end up skipping this part. We're going straight to this part. See how these are the same? So you can solve it this way if it makes more sense to you, but we can also go quicker and skip this step if you can remember not to do anything with the parentheses. We just divide this by 4 and this by 4. When a two-step equation involves addition of a constant, the solution involves the subtraction property of equality. We have a two-step equation here, and it involves the addition of a constant. We've got this plus 5. That means the solution is going to involve the subtraction property of equality. It's equal to both sides of the equation, and we're going to subtract. When a variable is multiplied by a constant or a coefficient, the solution involves the division property of equality. So here we have 2 times y minus 6 is equal to 8. So we're going to use division. Here we have a constant. We're going to divide both sides by 2. Or here we don't have the parentheses. We just have a coefficient. 2y is equal to 20. We divide both sides by 2. It's going to be y is equal to 10. And here, after we add 6 to each side, we would get y is equal to 10. And that's the addition property of equality. Now, we learned these properties of equality back in sixth grade math. We learned about addition and subtraction in 11.2 and multiplication and division in 11.3. And those lessons are linked in this description. It's kind of hard to remember things that you learned a year ago. So before we move on to the next lesson, you are going to want to review these because we're going to be talking about some more properties. 
Our next lesson, Writing and Solving One-Step Inequalities, we're going to be investigating inequalities. And we're going to be talking about addition and subtraction and multiplication and division properties of inequalities. That's why I thought you should review the properties of equalities first. Remembering what we learned from last year will help us go faster this year. And you may just watch the beginning of those videos and say, oh, I remember, and you'll be fine. So we can solve problems with either arithmetic or algebra, and now we've learned what is similar about solving them that way and what is different about solving them that way. Have a wonderful day. Please join me for our next lesson. Bye.